Hello everyone, Pentef here today for a new in shop concerning the Progetto 46 because as you can see there is both the Lorraine and the Progetto available in the shop, I don't remember, yeah offers right there, uh, you have them split, if you have to choose between both of them I'm not gonna make you wait longer, you should go for the Progetto 46 because in my opinion it's a better tank than the Lorraine but the Lorraine is still a great tank and I can understand some people telling me that the Lorraine is better than the Progetto, uh, overall I'm better with the Progetto, I I think uh, it's, it suits better my playstyle, that's why I would say to you to go for the Progetto 46 instead of the Lorraine because you can do much better things with the Progetto knowing you're not a pro player and maybe you can do better things with the Lorraine if you're a pro player. Really the Lorraine is a kind of a skilled needed tank. So, let's talk about our little Progetto 46, so tier 8, uh, really good credit coefficient, uh, usually with this tank if you do 3.4k damage you're gonna do around 100,000 credits, which is quite a lot. So yeah, overall we have a pretty nice tank, let's go directly into the, the, the characteristics, first the armor, you don't have any, maybe the only time of your life you're gonna be able to bounce with the Progetto is if someone is shooting straight in your gun mantlet, but it's not gonna happen a lot of times and even if they shoot this part they are probably gonna bounce uh, gonna penetrate anyway it's really rare to be able to bounce with your progetto if you don't take the shot in the tracks or uh, directly into the gun that's the first thing now the the main thing about the progetto is probably the gun and I have to compare it with the pentera right there and I'm gonna explain to you why the main difference between the progetto and the pentera despite the fact that the progetto has a better reload time Overall, it also has 1.5 seconds of reload between shells, which is not the case of the P44 Pantera. The P44 Pantera has 2 seconds, and I can guarantee you that you will feel the 0.5 seconds of difference. That's why, to me, overall, the Progetto is clearly better than the Pantera. I mean, it's not that big, it's also maybe a little bit better armored, etc. So, clearly, this is a great tank. Even for 10,000 gold, it's clearly worth it. Now, concerning the rest, uh, you have a pretty good mobility, and uh, yeah, if we sum up, let's sum it up quickly. You have an amazing gun, you have the auto-reloading mechanism, of course, because we are on the European, uh, an Italian tank, an Italian uh, auto-reloading uh, system. So, yeah, if we sum up, we have a really good gun, we have no armor and we have a good mobility so clearly that's the kind of tank that is going to be good in the hands of a pro player pro players but pro players already have this tank let's not uh, let's face it because pros don't need uh, don't need reviews to know if they have to buy a tank or not so yeah uh, that's the first thing concerning the progetto now uh, maybe one thing i can add concerning the equipments i'm using of course the provisions same as always the three the three last and now the equipment how am i equipped the tank. I'm not going for the improved ventilation but I, because I think it's clearly useless. For The 5% uh, 5 uh, improve is not a lot, that's why I go for the calibrated shell which is gonna allow me to penetrate a little bit more and clearly it's gonna make the difference because you're not gonna bounce a lot. Clearly maybe the main thing about the gun is that you don't have a really really great penetration with uh, with the gun so clearly if you can improve a little bit your, your average penetration with the uh, regular shells it's fine also maybe uh, for the rest I'm going for the enhanced gun laying drive and the vertical stabilizer to reduce my aiming time just because I don't see the point of the gun dispersion when you have an auto reloading mechanism because usually in 1.5 seconds you will it's not gonna make a real different that's why I go always for the aiming time now defense system because I'm not gonna ram anybody after I go for the improved assembly and not the 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 armor strength because uh, you don't have armor finally the toolbox for the module repair speed because this one is clearly useless after i go for improved optics because you're not a tank destroyer so you're not gonna camp right after the engine accelerator because your uh, your traverse speed is already good so i would rather have a little bit more speed than traverse speed and finally the 50 percent cooldown consumables because as you don't have to use adrenaline i don't see the point of using the high end consumable that's how i'm gonna play the progetto in the replay that is that should start right now now, before starting to really commend the replay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you wanna play this tank. 
uh, really, uh, I think there are two things that are working extremely well for this one. The peekaboo, which is the technique where you you just go to a spot, you shoot real quick and you go back without allowing your enemies to really aim at your tank, making them either miss you or bounce. Sometimes they are going to penetrate, but that's, uh, that's the deal, that's the trade you have to make. Or also some hold down, but when I say hold down, not really, uh, you don't stay in front of your opponent, it's more a peekaboo in hold down, you know what I mean, because you have a good gun depression. And that's exactly how you want to play your Progetto, you can also try some circling and flanking because the tank really, uh, thanks to its mobility, allow you to do that. But uh, yeah, most of the time I'm gonna go for the peekaboo situation. Uh, also, keep in mind that if you want to burst all your shells because of the auto-reloading mechanism, you need to wait for your enemy to shoot before unleashing the six, uh, the six shells. Now, if it has six shells, it would be pretty broken. The three shells you have in your magazine. But most of the time, you don't need to shoot all of them because I want to remind you that the auto-reloading mechanism is not uh, the traditional auto-loader mechanism. Because with this one, the more shells you shoot, the harder your reload. Now let's focus a little bit on the replay. As you can see, I went on the medium side. Of course, I'm a medium. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna face heavy tanks on the other side. And uh, it worked pretty well because we managed to block the T34 with the uh, SU122S. I SU122S. I, I don't. Really, I always have trouble saying uh, this name. I don't remember if it's ISU or, or SU, but no, it's ISU122S. So we we managed to to just get around the uh, the T34. And now, as you can see, the enemy team is coming back and uh, even if I still have a lot of HPs I don't have armor so I need to get away from here I took some several shots there unfortunately trying some uh, some sneaky shot on the T23 E3 that didn't work and I see on the map that D25 tried to circle alone and I'm to I'm thinking to myself hey you know what I should go around get out uh, get out of the situation take out D25 because that's already one guy less to deal with later on because E25 can be really Horrible to deal with if it's not spotted. So yeah, I went for it. Unfortunately, I took some shots trying to get him, but that's the rules. Uh, when, when you when you rush a E25, you you need to be aware that you're gonna take shots, of course, because the the reload time of the E25 is just insane. But yeah, it was still a good move. But the main problem now I have is the fact that I don't have any HPs left. I mean, uh, f I, I still have one third of my HPs, but that's not enough, for example, to bounce an HE of the VK 101P or etc. So I really want to play it carefully. I see that my team is uh, going not really aggressively. Everybody's camping in the back. And I told myself, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go in because if I go in, I'm probably going to die. That's why I need to stay in the back waiting maybe for something to pop so I tried to get some shots on the T32 and the T23 decided to circle as it decided to circle I'm taking two shots and I kill him but now I'm a one shot for everyone and that's where things are gonna get complicated because with a Progetto 46 you're not gonna bounce anything so I need to play it extremely carefully and as you all know my playstyle is really not suitable for this kind of behavior but here I don't have the choice and when you don't have the choice you don't uh, you follow not your own rules but the rules the game has to decide for you and that's the case so I decided instead of going straight in with my team on the other side I decided to just circle play the sneaky way and I'm hoping maybe to get a shot and I see that the T32 is trying to escape he's trying to escape or he's trying uh, to push alone so he's gonna be alone and I told myself hey that's my chance I'm just gonna wait for him to shoot and he just shot now so as he shot I can just track him and burst all my shells on him hoping for a kill and it worked three kills three kills for the moment I just need to go back waiting for my complete reload and I just hope my team is not gonna die unfortunately unfortunately that t44 you're gonna understand why uh, what's what is wrong with the t44 but uh, yeah, if you if you look closely, we are against a CDC and the VK101P. In this kind of situation, the VK101P is too slow to be able to do anything. So we need to get to the CDC. The main problem is that the T44 playing with me is completely retarded. I mean, maybe he's a new player. I'm not judging. No, I'm judging. But I mean, I can... Uh, 
I can forgive him if he really doesn't know what he's doing because I didn't check his stats after. But god damn it, what he did? What the fuck was that? Look, the VK and the CDC are split at the moment. We could easily push the CDC. I'm just waiting for the T44 to do the first move because of course I'm a one shot and when you're one shot you're clearly not going to be the first one making the first move. So I'm just waiting for him to go in and he does. At the beginning I was like, okay, he goes in the CDC, he's going to take some shots but probably he has the 122mm. If he goes for an HE he's going to one shot the CDC. I was like, Okay, T44, I trust you, you're gonna get him. But unfortunately, he took too much time and the VK had the time to drop off. So uh, I'm trying to get them from a different angle so they don't have to... They, they don't have their turret uh, turned on both of us. But I don't want to go too far because the CDC, I was, I was expecting the CDC, you know, to try to get some shots on me. And he pushes, he pushes, I'm gonna try to get a shot on the T44 and, uh, the T44, the VK, but unfortunately, the VK turned around to me, and the T44 went in, I don't know why he did that, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's over for the T44, because now, he's dead, he's dead, he was full life, and he just died like this without doing anything, unfortunately, I think he finished at zero damage, but I'm not sure. Uh, still, now it's a 1 versus 2 situation and I'm a one shot. I need to get rid first of the CDC and here I just watch the time and I'm like, nah, it's gonna be either a draw or I'm gonna lose, but it's impossible for us to win that. Except if uh, maybe I manage to amorite both of them with two shells, but let's face it, it's not gonna happen. So I'm trying to get some distance to be able to see them before they see me when they are pushing me, because they know I'm going there. I know that they know I'm here. So I go for a first shot on the CDC, he tries a shot on the move, he misses, I'm gonna try an HE, it didn't work unfortunately. He comes back to try to kill me and I manage to destroy the CDC. Four kills, now we only have to deal with the VK and I, right now I'm gonna do... The worst mistake ever, I'm going straight in because I'm writing something in the chat. Look at this, here I'm gonna write something right now and I'm writing and I'm just going in and I just realized what I did that the VK was just in front of me because I was writing and I died like that at 3 seconds of the end. But at least it's not a draw so I, uh, it's not a problem. 4.5k damage, first class, high caliber metal. Really the Progetto is an extremely nice tank and look at the number of credits I did. I did uh, maybe a little bit less than what I was expecting because I shot a lot of gold shells here. But clearly the Progetto 46 is a must have in your garage. You're gonna love it and I hope this review will convince you to buy it instead of the fucking Shinukai crates. Thank you all.